Greetings all, welcome to another session here of 2Z Talks. Today we are going to be investigating our first Visual Studio program that we're going to create today. So we're gonna open up Visual Studio for the first time. We're going to try to create a new project, look a little bit about uh, the, the components that are there. We will look at uh, some things that you may want to do to help make your life easier inside this new world of Visual Studio. We'll test your little program and save it, and then you should be able to be on your own, off and going, creating new programs. Without any further ado, I'd recommend you <clears throat> go down to your uh, Visual Studio, get that up and running. This would be Visual Studio 22, 2022. Typically, this type of window is going to open up, and it's going to ask you to create a new project. I'm just going to skip this for now. We're going to continue and move on to the actual program. And here's what the program <clears throat> typically looks like when you open it up. On the right hand side here, you've got something called the Solution Explorer. And that's where a whole bunch of your files, header files and source files are gonna be listed when they're done. Note up here in the upper right, it says sign in. You can sign in to Microsoft so that your data and devices can all be synchronized. This is helpful for people who are working on different devices at different times in different places, and they want everything synchronized so it's all the same. You can also sign into things like GitHub, where your data can be stored when multiple people can go in and check out certain pieces. Uh, we're not going to be doing that today because we are at the basic level. But that's the Solution Explorer. Over here on the left, you've got a menu and some uh, toolbars that you are going to be able to have access to. We are simply going to click on File, New Project, which is Control Shift N for the future. And the same window is going to be opening up. We are going to be picking a console app. Console app is going to be running the Windows terminal and it prints stuff to the screen. For example, Hello World, which we are going to be doing today. We'll call this uh, particular project Hello World. Actually, let's just call it Hello. Um, every time you create a new assignment, every time you create a new project, you should give it a new name so that all of those files can be stored in a separate folder. You should also note the location. Where are all these files being stored on your hard drive? They're being stored in user, your name, source, repos. You can pick a different location, but you should know where they are whenever you need to move them, upload them, or do something else with them. Know the location. So let's click Create and see what happens. You'll now note the solution window now has a whole bunch of different things in here. External dependencies, header files, resource files, and source files. You'll note in here, click on that little triangle, you've got one source file called hello.cpp. .cpp files is where you actually put your programming. It's where you write the code, okay? And you'll note this says hello.ccpp. But over here in the display window here, that's the name of this file, hello.cpp. Okay, so if you're gonna be adding more things, you'll come over here to sources, right click and add a new item. You can also do it under projects, project, add a new item. That's if we're gonna be adding multiple files to this project. Now, for our sake, we're simply going to be using one file in order to create today. Um, we have uh, some information here that I just want to go through. Anything that begins with a slash slash is a comment. The programmer, I'm sorry, the uh, compiler ignores this information. This is information for you, the programmer, or information for somebody else who comes in and looks at your code. That's all that is. You have an include file here. An include file is a directive to tell the, the uh, compiler, when you compile this program, make sure you also compile anything that's in this extra library. And there are hundreds of libraries that can be added. We currently have IO Stream here. We have int main. This is the main programming area where data is going to be placed. So you've got a little line here that says standard, C out, and then hello world, All right? Some other notes here from Microsoft, use the Solution Explorer window to add and manage files. The Solution Explorer window to add and manage files. Use the Team Explorer window to connect to source control, who's allowed to do what with stuff. Use the Output window to build output and other messages. This is gonna be your output window right here. 
use the error list window, which is going to pop up down here below whenever you have errors. And we'll look at those in just a moment. Um, in the future, when you want to open this up, simply go to Open Projects and select the solution file, SLN file, that you need. Now, I've got a little template that I typically use, and so we're going to get rid of all that and throw that template in here uh, right now. Again, we have comments, all right? And we have some include libraries. I've added an extra library. Uh, but there are some other notes in here that you'll want to look at. For example, there are global declarations that you may want to include. We'll talk more about this in later videos. Constants and type definitions only do not do variables here. So if there's a constant that you use everywhere, like pi, and you want to assign it to a variable, you can do that here. You may have function prototypes, or what I would call function declarations, where you create a function by beginning here and just declaring what it is. You'll give it a name, you'll give it any of the variables that are associated with it, but it's just the declaration. You're not doing anything else with it. Below this, you have, again, int main. Again, this is your main program. And uh, again, notes here just to help you out. Here's a little note that says, hey, put your name here. So you're going to change this and put your name. And if this is a homework assignment that you're doing for some class, you can put in the lab number there just to help you out. Below that, I've got a note that says variable declarations. So if you have any variables that you need to define, L, R, name, whatever it may be, you should put them all here at the top just to make it easier to understand. Below that, after, you define, after you've uh, declared all your variables, then you begin to do your program logic. And this is the actual bulk of where your program is going to be. So for example, for us, we're going to just do a C out. And C out is uh, out to the console is basically all that means. And we're going to be sending data out there. We're going to put a hello world out there. A couple exclamation marks. And, uh, whoops, not a zero. There we go. Um, then we're going to end, do an end line. I'm going to say end line this. Give me an end of line and go somewhere else. Um, you'll note if there's a problem with something that I do, I'm going to get an error uh, somewhere. Here you see uh, an underlined red. Underlined red means, hey, there's an error somewhere. Note down here as well, it says there's an error somewhere. Uh, there's actually more than one, oddly enough, because I don't have a semicolon at the end here, right? I should. Um, so the program is going to freak out when we get to this. I'm going to put this semicolon in just to make life easier. Notice after I put in the semicolon, the underline went away because it says, okay, now I know that this is something else. Now I know it's an actual thing, okay? So at the end here, let me finish this last one here. So here's your bulk of your main program. Everything's going to go in between these two brackets. That's for int. If you've created a declaration of a function up here, then down here you actually need to define what that function is. Tell me the specific details of what that function actually does. So typically what happens when you're using functions, which I'm assuming at this point you're not going to, but put it in here. Here you declare a function. Inside here you call the function. And down here at the bottom you define a function. So those are all the pieces. Now I put some code in here. And uh, let me change my name here to uh, me. All right, and you notice that I've made some changes. And I know this because right here after the words hello.cpp, there's a little semi, there's a little asterisk there that says, that tells me it's not saved. I'm going to save it. To save it, control S, quickest way to do it. Notice the asterisk is gone. I can go file, save if I want to, but uh, no need. Control S does it quickly. When I want to test this, I just simply run the local Windows debugger. And I can just click on this and here's what will happen. It'll build it, create a little window here. Okay, and now my name is here and it says hello world and then it says press any key to continue. Okay, so that's how that would run. If there were problems, they might show up here. You can go look at them down here in the uh, output window, the error window, to see what those are. Here there are no issues that were reported, so yay. And that's what a basic program is going to look like. And now that it's saved, I see no asterisk, right? I can leave. And so that's basically all that you're going to be doing here 
when your first program. Uh, hope this was helpful and let you know that uh, some of these quick keys, control S to save, F5 to actually run the program. So um, those are some things that you can do for your first program. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to try to answer them down below. And I do wish you enjoy doing all of this wonderful coding. Talk to you later now. Bye-bye.